Hey everybody, this is Doug. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to calculated metrics in customer journey analytics. Now, if you are familiar with calculated metrics from Adobe Analytics, regular Adobe Analytics, then it is really the same in customer journey analytics with just a few little things to remember, and I'll get to that in a minute. So let's talk about what calculated metrics are. Well, here I have a table with my data sources, and I've got the people metric, which is basically the same as visitors. And of course, I can add additional metrics. So maybe I'll add the orders metric, grab that and bring it over here and just add it to this table, drop it in there. And now I can see the number of orders during this time frame per data source, as well as people. And you can see, of course, that the orders are being fulfilled in analytics and in point of sale or at the store and also at the call center. And those are the three data sources that have any orders in them. But maybe I'd like to know the orders per person or per people here. And, you know, I don't have a brain that will do that math on the fly. <laughs> so we can actually create a calculated metric to drop into this table so that my brain doesn't have to explode trying to do that math on the fly. So um, we'll go to metrics and we click on this plus to do a new calculated metric. And we give it a title and maybe it's just orders per person. And we could give it a description, but we don't have to. We have the format. What do we want this format in? Um, time, decimal, percent, currency, etc. Definitely want decimal. And I'm going to put two decimal places because we might have some very small numbers. Uh, we can show upward trend as good, green. And that's good. The higher number of orders per person, the better. So up is good. We can also add some tags if we have a bunch of calculated metrics and we want to be able to add some metadata to them. And basically, I'm going to go down here to the definition and start dragging things over. Now, you can see you can drag and drop the metrics, which we're going to do. But you can also drag and drop dimensions and segments and functions in here. And I'm not going to do that in this introduction, but we'll talk about that in other videos. So for now, we can even just take our queue from the title, which is orders per person. And so we'll just drag in orders. And we'll drag in our people right below it. And by default, it is doing the divided by. So that's per. And that's exactly what I need. So this one was super easy to create. And now when I save that, it will become available to me and you'll be able to see by this little icon that it's a calculated metric and that it was built by me or by a user, not by Adobe. You have other metrics here that are out of the box and so they have the little Adobe symbol here. So now I can take my orders per person and drag that over and I can add that here. I'll just add it on the front of that and that'll do my calculation and show me those numbers. And it's showing me the percentage of the total and it doesn't really make sense on this kind of a calculated metric. So I'm gonna go up here to this column, click on this gear and deselect percent. I don't need that. So I'm gonna come back here and now I just have my numbers. That makes a lot more sense. And I can see in this demo data that the store data, I'm getting a lot more orders per person than in analytics online or in my call center, people calling up to order stuff. So that gives me really great data. And again, it makes it so that I don't have to do math in my brain on the fly. So that's really good. That's your calculated metrics. And just a couple things to remember, you are working with all of your data here. So if you have multiple data sources coming in, you'll want to know if certain metrics are specific to one data source or to multiple data sources. We can see here that the orders metric is coming from three different data sources and our people metric is coming from all these different data sources. And so that's really important to know, especially if I were gonna do this for the entire data view and not per data source, I would get totals for all of my data, but I would need to know that, yeah, that's really coming from the analytics data, the store data, and the call center data. So it's very important to know your schema and which metrics are available to you from the different data sources that you are analyzing here in Customer Journey Analytics. Good luck.